is up, fam? What do you guys have questions about? Oh, yeah. So <clears throat> Tom had a question about working with clients and charging them said monies <clears throat> and how to go about doing that. And do you limit revisions? These are all fantastic, fantastic questions to be asked. Um, so right now I'm get, looking at some reference and gathering some ray to look at. Oh yeah, look at this. This is super cool. Um, okay, so when it comes to reference, oh dude, I want to say something. Uh, I'm sorry. When it comes to uh, working with clients. My uh, my answer to this is specifically that you should you should charge how much you think you're going to be doing. So if you feel like they're going to ask you to do a lot of revisions, then you should charge as if you're going to do a lot of revisions. If you don't do this, then yes, they're going to take advantage of whatever you um, didn't say, you know. And this is really really important because a lot of times. Uh, people will say, yeah, I'll do this like commission work for like, uh, hold on, I'm going to save this brush. This is just good old, good old roundy. Okay. I'm going to grab this one, put it right back there. Makes sense. Okay, let's get back to good old roundy though. So, yeah, so if you are going to do, let's say, a character design and you think that it's going to take you, um, like you think it's going to take you 10 hours to do, okay, and you charge per hour and you charge something along the lines of, um, Fifty dollars an hour, sixty dollars an hour, whatever that may be. And if this is the case, if you charge this much, then you have to uh, ask for that much work if it's going to take you ten hours. So if it's going to take you ten hours, and you you charge fifty dollars an hour, simple math, they're going to have to pay you five hundred dollars for the work that you're going to do. If they are not capable of giving you that much money, then you just work less. You tell them that you're not going to do something as elaborate as they were hoping for. And it's, it's really not as hard as you might think because uh, a lot of times people will um, go ahead and, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to start over. Uh, people will essentially like take a $500 bid on a character, let's say, or $300 and then they'll spend like 20, 30, 40 hours on a character. Let's say you spend 60 hours, just like two weeks of like good hard work. This is including revisions. This is including uh, design iterations and all the fancy stuff that a professional would have to do to do a good concept design, you know? Then if you do the math, you're like working for $5 an hour, you know? And so this is really important to, to recognize like what your hourly worth is and be very clear to them. Like, yeah, I'm not going to work more than this. So like if they say, you know, uh, we want more revisions, you make it very clear. Like, look, I'm not, not going to do a lot of revisions. I'll have like one pass where you can like decide on the designs you like. And then I'll have another pass where I'll like refine it uh, greatly. But you have to like decide on that one. Like when I've done the second one, you have to like, I'm sorry, the first, first thing you have to decide on the first stab of the design. And if you don't like the final result, um, that's kind of on you to pay me more to do more variations. But you also have to kind of like demonstrate what that might look like. If they don't know, you can have examples on your portfolio. So this is what I would expect to do for this much money. And if they, Agree to those terms, then you just try to achieve at least that quality. Night night. Get out of here. Get out of here, little dude. Sorry, my baby came to <laughs> say night night to me. Um, 
And so that's like the best way that I usually would approach uh, that circumstance. I find that like a lot of people do not do this. Uh, like I said, they'll just kind of just take flat rates and then work long ass hours. Uh, and don't worry, man, like I've made that mistake myself. This is why I know it's a bad choice. Like I remember I worked on a project for seven months and I got only paid $700. That's all I was literally getting paid pennies, you know? And I remember thinking like, oh, what a terrible deal that I got myself into, you know? But I wasn't smart enough to understand it. Now I do. I understand it very, very well. Like why that was a bad idea. Um, but yeah, you you make it explicit too. Like no revisions, <laughs> you know, unless they pay for more revisions. If they want to see more um, designs, you know, they're going to have to pay for that. You know, they're going to just have to pay for it. It's just like you wouldn't like um, pay for like a fast food like like you get like a burrito or something and then and then just be like go to the fast food chain and be like you know although i bought a burrito like i didn't really like it didn't satiate me as much as i thought it would can i have another one and they'd be like yeah sure of course i mean actually some places will do this right like uh like i think the other day someone i think someone literally stole my coffee from starbucks uh, and they just gave me a new coffee. But that's, I guess, that's a little bit different. Um, let me try to think of another example. Like, if you, like, generally do, like, a bad job at a store, like, if somebody gives you, like, a bad um, meal or they got your order wrong, then, yeah, if you, of course, they're going to give you, they're going to give you, um, they're going to give you, like, a refund or they're going to give you a uh, another version of the thing, right? But that's if you do a really bad job. If, so if you did a good job and it's more like, oh, you, I, I like the burrito, but can we do, like, can I get more burritos? Because, like, it was really good and I feel like we can explore more of the flavors that are available in your guys' shop. They're like, no, you got to pay for that one. And it's the same way. Like, you got to just keep paying me if you like what you got. Uh, if they're like, oh, now we want more revisions. Like, I think that we're almost there. Like, it's really good. But, like, if we can just do one more attempt. They didn't pay for this, right? I guess another, a better analogy than using the fast food example would be like if if they um, if they if you uh, ask for a burrito and you say I only have a dollar though, and they're like, all right, well we'll only give you like just a tortilla and the beans, and you have to make the rest of it then I guess like that makes more sense. And then they're like, well, you know, I really would like like the cheese and lettuce and all those other stuff as well. And you're there, you're really stretching that dollar, but it's like, you've already kind of took money or you already paid for what you wanted. You already kind of arranged it. So that's probably a better example, a better uh, way of thinking about it. But anyway, anyways, hope that helps out. Any other questions? Um, I have one for you. Let's do it. So I'm here in San Diego and obviously just kind of, awesome. yeah, just kind of starting out and trying to, you know, develop a portfolio. And Sweet. from what I figured from like self research that, you know, developing a portfolio for studio specifically is the best way to go about it as opposed to a generic portfolio. Absolutely. Is that, okay. Uh, with Sony being here, I mean, it's like a 15 minute drive for me because I'm in Escondido. Like, obviously, that's attractive, but, you know, I see they hire for internships all the time, but I don't, I'm not going to school, which is why I do the things like being self-taught and this mentorship uh what's a way that i might be able to direct a portfolio to cater to them um you just look at what they got and then do stuff in that realm uh right. i think sony san diego doesn't do some of the cool concept stuff that you would probably want to do right and that's they do like I think it's a baseball game and it's like, well, they don't need me for that at all. Like, they still need concept artists, but for different reasons. I think mostly like um, style frames, but I think ultimately they don't have a big viz dev team. Okay. This, is, this is right. 
Okay, so that's why places like Riot and things like that would be more attractive. Um, well, the way you should think about it is you should build your portfolio towards a studio, okay, but not with the idea that you're going to work at that studio. Okay. Okay? Because then you're setting up yourself for a bunch of expectations that might never fall through. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, a better way of thinking about it is like I just mentioned. Why? Because um, let's say you get a um, an opportunity to work for a ride. That'd be great. But maybe they don't have a spot for you. Maybe there's they're full their capacity. Right. There's all sorts of reasons why you can't work for a studio like Riot, right? Right. That has nothing to do with your quality of your portfolio. Right. And this is like a really important fact to address. So then what I usually recommend is that when people think about like working at, oh, what? It's interesting. Oh, okay, cool. Um, when people think about working for these types of studios, um, you want to like build a portfolio that is like Riot stuff because of other factors. Like what if you get a job at another studio that is hiring artists like you, <laughs> you know? Right. Not solely aiming for just one, obviously, because that's closing out. It's chokeholding your chances yeah um but but not really like if you only did artwork that really looks like it would work for riot right what i'm saying is like there's companies that want to do that style too <laughs> you know yeah yeah and and if you have that style um and you're you would just be as good enough as, as an artist as some people who already work there you know what i mean like they're gonna like they're gonna poach you man they're gonna take you before riot comes to their senses potentially you know um gotcha. and i have friends who've left companies like riot and poached artists from riot you know what i mean <laughs> and so it's 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 not about like like why is that a good strategy is because you have focus in your portfolio that's why it's a good strategy does gotcha, this make sense? Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a good strategy because if you just kind of like, I don't know, I'm going to work for whoever or whatever, and you're just part, putting all kinds of random mass shit in your art portfolio, you lose right. focus. You're never really getting good at any one thing. You know what I mean? Like you're kind of just, uh, it's like the whole jack of all trades, master of none problem. Yeah, exactly. Right? Where I'm saying you should be a master of something, you know? Yeah. And if you say, I'm going to go for the riot style, like, cause I like that style. This is the aesthetic that I want to kind of do, you know, and achieve, then you're going to do everything in your power to try to achieve that aesthetic. You know what I mean? Right. And then you have a lot of examples of what that aesthetic looks like. So you'll be able to kind of like try to compensate where your, your shortcomings are by uh, observation and research. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like there's a lot of ways you can learn from the artists who work in that um, world, you know, because there's a lot right. of examples of what that looks like. And then uh, there's going to be like, yeah, a company that's like, yeah, we're trying to like build a mobile game that looks just like League of Legends. Right. And you're like, well, I work looks just like League of Legends, you know, and then they're going to be like, we you know, that's why we're calling you, you know. <laughs> and okay. so... You see what I'm saying? And then that's how that pendulum begins to right. fall into your favor. You know what I mean? Like my um my style is a style that is my own. And what ends up happening is that I get work. Oh, this is kind of a bizarre design. Sorry, right. I'm just gonna keep running with it. <laughs> um you know, my style is a style that uh Oh, I see what's wrong with it. Let me see something. That's yeah, actually harder to see when you get rid of all the values. Um, where uh, people have a clue of what they're going to get when they bring me on board, you know? Yeah. They're not, they're not going to be shocked that I draw like 
bunch of robots and monsters and stuff, you know. Um, and so when I built my portfolio, I built my portfolio around this principled idea, you know. And uh, I get approached, and this is what happens. They they ask me to do these types of things, and I just do it, right? And mm-hmm. so whenever people ask, like, how do you build a portfolio? Like, like, is it good to look at a company? Like, so you can kind of build a portfolio towards the company. It's a matter of how you think about what that means. That's the solution, right? And the reason why I encourage it is because of that one's, that position, that position of thinking, you know? Right. Yeah. And it hopefully it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense to me. And you'll see that like when you start to show it to people too, they'll hopefully give you poignant feedback too. They won't just like be like, oh, you need more environments. Like if you have a really good portfolio that looks, that's like leaning in one very specific direction, people should be able to like guide you in that direction, you know? Okay. So anyway, yes, it absolutely is a good strategy. I, I approve of this message. <laughs> nice. Thanks, man. Yeah. Cause so, yeah, I mean the long-term goal would definitely be to work for myself at some point, but seeing working as a, you know, for a studio would be a great way to learn the fundamentals and develop a structure to do my own thing from obviously. So that's the attraction to that. I agree, sir. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Yeah. The problem with my drawing here is the head. It's like in, in a bad position. It's all right. I'll just deal with it. I was going to paint this anyway. No, actually, I think I just fixed it. That was a tangent. Any other questions? Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually continue painting on this. But I'm going to use this line art as the guide. Yes, actually, I've got uh, got one here. So I really like to do sketches, especially pencil sketches. Uh, but I feel like I'm too slow when I'm, when I'm doing that. Uh-huh. And I, I would like to be much more efficient and, and, and uh, faster. So when I started to do this assignment for you, I tried to move, uh, step out from my comfort zone and uh, do the block-ins, but it's just uh, overwhelming for me to think about uh, design forms, value, texture at the same time. So I, I, just, I just want to ask, uh, is, is there a good way to start the block-ins? Is there a special kind of uh, uh, thinking process that you think is, is, uh, is good for that? Or it's only about practice and time that I put in? Yeah, um, it's the latter's practice. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I would say I'm going to just focus on this right here. Um, One thing that I would say about this is that a lot of times people uh, will see that like, you know, you do like the blocking style Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very attractive because it's so efficient and so quick, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then they try it themselves and then it's like, it all falls apart like immediately. Um, and so the reason why this happens, uh, the reason why this occurs is because, uh, you just don't have enough of, uh, a knowledge of Mm -hmm. like anatomy and form and design, like you just mentioned, Mm -hmm. all of these things are not in your skill set. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you need to start acquiring these things in your skill set. Mm -hmm. And that's what will make these things easier. And so it is a practice thing. But I will say that the mentality of it, right? Like what do, what do I think about when I'm doing this mm -hmm. um, is not going to help either because what I usually think about when I'm doing this stuff is none of that stuff. I don't think about design. <laughs> I don't think about perspective, you know? Mm -hmm. I just paint whatever I need yeah. to paint, okay? Oh. And I just rely on my intuition. I just say, okay, you know, time to just do, do some work, mm -hmm. right? And this is all important to understand because you said when you started blocking in, you just started feeling overwhelmed. You felt like mm -hmm. you're, you're losing control of your art, whatever, or at least you're implying this. So what, one thing that I would say is like, okay, so you normally would sketch things out, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So why? Why do you sketch things out? Um, because I can focus on, 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 on only the, the, the forms and, yeah. and, and, and the design. Okay. I don't have, I, I don't have to worry about, uh, anything else. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Right. So mm -hmm. then when you have to do all those things together, it becomes a challenge, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So let me ask you another question. When you, uh, when you walk and talk mm -hmm. let's say you're walking down the street and you're talking to me we're all hanging out and we're talking mm -hmm. and walking do you think about walking no not at all why not i mean <laughs> because because i i've been doing it for <laughs> 33 years now <laughs> okay so hopefully you can see where i'm going with this mm -hmm. yes yes so true. essentially if we were to take this as a parallel to walking Mm -hmm. What this is basically saying to me is that you don't know how to walk, mm -hmm. right? And it's important because uh, if you start thinking of it in these terms, it makes it way, way easier to understand why you're having such a problem. Uh, if I were to tell you that there was a time where you didn't know how to walk, would you believe me? <laughs> yeah, of course there is. If you really think about it, you're like, oh, yeah, of course, when I was like a toddler, right? Yeah, yes. And trust me, when uh, I have kids and I've seen my kids and I don't know if you have kids, but if you've ever watched children learning how to walk for the first time, it's, it's a thing. Like they're like mm -hmm. totally trying to figure it out, you know, mm -hmm. they're like stumbling all over the place, you know, they're falling on themselves. They trip, they don't understand friction, right? Mm -hmm. Like they'll like run full speed on carpet. And then if there's a transition to hardwood floor, they don't realize that they should slow down, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is let's let's go back to art and find the parallels. It's like if you don't understand form and anatomy and you're full full sprinting into it with no real understanding of it, you're gonna slip and fall mm -hmm. way more often. Mm -hmm. Right? So then what's the solution then if you want to get better at this? Well, I have to practice. Yeah. Because the reason why you got so good at walking where you don't even think about it anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Is because you, like you said, you've been doing it for 30, 30 plus years, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? How, how much have you painted in that style, that block in style? Well, I tried uh, only two days. Uh, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> so, and you don't know how to do it? That's crazy, <laughs> dude. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you know, so think about that, right? Like you, you need to like, re you got to remove yourself from this mentality of like, I didn't get it right away. I'm a loser. I mean, that's stupid. Yeah. That, that thinking is the problem. Not that you're bad at blocking in stuff. The reason mm -hmm. why you, that you get so discouraged, that's, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. It's unrealistic. Like, of course, you're not going to be good at something you've only trained in two days, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, yes. So you can see kind of like, oh, yes, of course. As we're saying all this stuff out loud, you're like, oh, my gosh, of course. Yes. Like you're too hard on yourself for not being good at something for, for the first time. You know? <laughs> Sometimes it happens. Sometimes there might be some intuitive things that you might have done in the past that will lend you a hand in learning how to paint better. You know, mm -hmm. Like I, I have drawn and designed for several years now. So 
transitioning to a different style, like the comic book style that I've been doing lately, mm-hmm. is is less of a challenge if I started from complete scratch, right? Because I at least have some principal idea of what good design is, you know? Yeah, sure. It's more of like a technique. It's more of like a uh, learning new habits and gaining new skills, mm-hmm. not like learning how to draw and like, it, a, a good equivalent if we're using the running analogy or the walking analogy again, it's like now I'm learning how to do hurdles, right? Like this, if I'm a sprinter, like I know how to just run straight. I'm really good at running in the straight line, mm-hmm. but then like, okay, now I'm learning how to, um, you know what I mean? Like jump over a hurdle. Mm-hmm. So that's like the new element, but the running part I get, but it doesn't automatically give me a pass at hurdles. You know what I mean? Like I still have mm-hmm. to train to get that skill, you know, respect the hustle to acquire that new skill, you know? Okay. And I think a lot of times people don't respect this. They get real, uh, they get real bent out of shape. Uh, When they are not good at something right away when they're already good at other things. Yes. Uh, just just respect that it's a different thing and you'll 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 have way less heartache way more often you know mm-hmm. yeah actually a few weeks ago i tried to think about uh, all these problems i have um, about myself uh, in, in 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 this uh, art thing and um, <laughs> because 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 uh, i'm i'm a, a powerlifter coach uh, too oh okay so I try to think about uh, all this thing, this this uh, work I, I've got, the the art. Uh, just like I'm, I try to do uh, sport. So if I Absolutely. if if I want if I want to get better, if I want to get bigger and, and stronger, I have to uh, work on my weak points, and I try to um, draw a map for myself. What are my weak point so what do i have to work on uh to get better at at those things so i started to work uh, on anatomy and and and, and design language and and all all these things so Mm -hmm. all that i can do is is put put as much work and uh, time into these things and 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 keep working on it right Absolutely. So like the powerlifting is a great, we can, we can, it's, it's analogous. There's, there's a, there are similarities. So with powerlifting, if somebody comes in and to your gym for the first time and they're like, all right, man, I'm going to go straight ahead and start doing like power cleans or something crazy, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like, and then they do it and then they they snap their collarbone and I don't get it. You know, (laughs) no one's ever going to think this way. You know, they're going to always, even the the student's going to be very obviously aware the reason why they shouldn't start with the power clean. They're aware. (laughs) The problem with art is like art doesn't have this kind of very obvious barrier. Mm -hmm. And so you have someone like me explain to you that it's pretty much the same, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's because like art's very personal, Mm -hmm. right? And this feeling of personality, like usually it's, it's, I call it the artistic bias, right? Mm -hmm. The artistic bias is like a lie. It's something that your brain, like your artistic brain lies to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And like, so this, this, this is a good example of when your brain, artistic brain lies to you. Like if you're doing a piece of artwork and you feel really good about it mm-hmm. and then you show it to somebody else and they're just like meh <laughs> yeah. and then you do a piece of artwork that you feel like meh about and then people are like wow this is amazing yeah. you know um i'm sure many of you guys have experienced this so that's the artistic bias the artistic bias is that the pieces that you think are of value that people should also recognize that value and mm-hmm. when they don't it, it blows your way you don't understand and then um the artwork that you feel like is shallow or doesn't have that much value to you, uh, people tend to be like, oh man, that's some of your best work. And you should, you should pay attention to that more than your own, like your own biases. Because uh-huh. that's more realistic of what's probably good about your work and what's bad about your work. 
Uh -huh. You know, what, how people um, react to it. Not always, but definitely most of the time. Right? Oh, I get it. You know, it's, it's a great way to gauge what's actually good and what's actually bad mm -hmm. um, within your work from, a, from an outsider's point of view, mm -hmm. you know? And the way that I like to, to, to help people get past the artistic bias, right, is simply just think of it this way, you know, like think of it as like a bias, it's like your opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, this is like, I don't know if you follow politics, but you know, specifically in America, there's like a real problem where uh, people are really leaning into their biases and it's really, it's really discouraging. And I honestly think that it's okay to have a bias. So for, for instance, I was talking about the artistic bias and you're saying, you know, let's say I like to do more sci-fi stuff. That's just my personal bias. So when I mm -hmm. see sci-fi movies like Pacific Rim, I'm generally going to like it more, even if it's kind of trash, you know, mm -hmm. that's my artistic bias. And that's my opinion. And it's, it's kind of, it's okay. You know, you're, everyone's going to have a bias. It's about uh, if your bias blinds you from the reality. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you have like these people on, on polar opposite angles of like, the teams in politics and I'll mm -hmm. use like I'll use two examples that are relatively um I mean most things are pretty pretty hardcore <laughs> like there's nothing that I could say that someone will be like not offended usually but like uh <laughs> but like okay let's take some something and then I'm just going to keep it pretty apolitical mm -hmm. right and so imagine um that a, the Amazon forest is on fire right mm -hmm. And so you are on one end, you could be like, oh yeah, you know, the climate and we got to think about the environment and care about the environment. Uh, and then on the other end is like, this is just a natural phenomenon that farmers do to, you know, graze mm -hmm. the land, whatever. And, and, and whatever you stand on that political spectrum, this is what you're going to uh, believe, right? Mm -hmm. And so if, to be objective, you would have to recognize the realities of both statements. So for instance, mm -hmm. the, the truth is this is a grazing practice, in, uh, for instance, in Brazil, right? Yeah. This is common. This, this is actually something they did, that they actually do, right? This is not as uncommon as maybe it may seem. But the environment is also in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not that the environment is in trouble like we're going to destroy the planet. No, the planet's going to destroy us. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. <laughs> earth is going to be just fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if the climate uh, changes its temperature and rises, it's not the planet that's at danger. <laughs> yes. The earth has been hot before. It's fine. It's us humans that can't survive in these extreme weather conditions. Yeah. So there's truth in both statements, but if you believe in one camp right you're biased and you're blind you're, you don't care about the reality of uh, the other thing you're never really going to find the truth mm -hmm. art is the same way you know you'll hear people talk about design in a way that's like so religious they'd be like you only should be designing simple shapes simple shapes but then you watch a movie that has nothing but complicated designs in it and you think it's good and it's very popular and it does really well in the movie theaters great mm -hmm. example the transformers franchise yeah right uh, the Transformers franchise makes way more money than most of the Pixar movies, you know? <laughs> so who's right, right? Yeah. And so you got to like think of it in these terms, like the artistic bias. That's why I like to stay on objective realities as best as possible. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, I love, uh, I love Uncharted, mm -hmm. but I probably would hate designing for it because mm -hmm. it's very realistic, you know? Um, yeah. Like, I don't know if I would have fun designing like khakis, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I know someone will, there's someone out there that loves doing that kind of stuff. I, mm -hmm. I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I hate Skyrim. You know, I think the, the Bethesda games are not very good. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a big fan of them. But if they reached out to me and said, hey, we want you to work on Skyrim 2, I'd be like, okay do it man because <laughs> i'm in i'm a fan of fantasy like high fantasy mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah does this make sense yeah yeah sure and so sure. this is this is me putting my bias aside um in my opinion right these are also my opinions mm -hmm. um you know what if uh 
Lord of the Rings, they made a reboot of it. Uh, I, I don't like the Lord of the Rings movies, uh, mm -hmm. but I understand what makes them great. I think I even applied for an art director position a while ago at Amazon because they're making the Lord of the Rings, I don't know, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. I'd art direct that. I'd do a good job. I'm pretty sure I would. <laughs> you know? Even though I hate Lord of the Rings movies. I am yeah. just not a fan of those movies. But I understand what makes those movies great. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand why other people love it. I just don't. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not my cup of tea. You know what I mean? And yeah. so, that's, that uh, is, in my opinion, a good sign of a, a designer who's relatively has a good uh, pulse on the industry and what does well, and whatever. I was talking mm -hmm. about this in another class too, and I was talking about how Twilight, like if they were to come to me and say, hey, we want you to, we want to redesign Twilight or we're going to do a new version of Twilight or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'd be like, all right, let's do it. And my first thing would be like, look up e-boys, like, <laughs> and that whole genre of human beings, you know? Mm -hmm. um, because I think that would be a good place to start to design mm -hmm. um, a movie for pre pre uh, preteen girls, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, that audience. <laughs> I don't know anything about that culture, but I would learn so that I can do a good design mm -hmm. of costumes for that um, that movie, you know. So yeah. obviously, they won't approach me because I don't design stuff like this. There's nothing. In, there's no e boys in my portfolio, mm -hmm. at least for now. <laughs> But if I was asked to do it, man, I'll do a good ass job, man. Like that's uh -huh. because that's my job is to find how to make things look cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, going back to kind of the original question that was asked and about like how to get better at like, like blocking in and all that stuff. Like ultimately mm -hmm. the point I'm making is to get good at most anything. You, you just gotta be, you gotta remove yourself from this kind of personal uh, perspective, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. So you can see objectively what's going on and it'll allow you to improve much more rapidly and also makes you a better artist, right? Because as soon as you start removing yourself personally from the equation, like if, if you kind of say to yourself, oh, I don't know how to, like I did a really bad job of drawing this thing. And instead of taking mm -hmm. that personal and be like, oh, um, well, let's look at the facts. How much time have I invested into this genre of art? Mm -hmm. Oh, very little. Okay, that's probably why. Let me focus on practicing. And almost instantly you'll see that the more you practice it, the better you get at it. Because that's yeah. just the nature of things. And going back to the power clean stuff, uh, I would start with lighter weights, right? You would probably train somebody, okay, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to just get the, we're going to even get the bar, which has weight mm -hmm. to it. We're just going to get like a PVC pipe and you're just going to practice the movement. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right? Because that's the yeah. right thing to do. You don't want people to get injured. And then once they practice the movement, you feel confident, then they go with the bar. And even then, you're not putting weight on the side of the bar. It's just like 45 pounds, right? Yeah. And then, and then once that starts looking good, then you start adding like 10 pounds, 25, et cetera, et cetera, right? Until you yeah. see somebody power cleaning like 500 pounds, you know? But they <laughs> built that over like a, a few years if they're patient. Yes. Uh, if they're not patient, they're going to try to do it in like a few months and then fucking, then they're going to pop their collarbone, you know, mm. <laughs> you know, uh, people get a little overzealous and uh, I know because I've done this myself too. I try to lift <laughs> more than I should be lifting, you know, yeah. just because you get, you feel strong. You're like, oh, tight. I'm going to go for it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and he do it. And you're like, what was I thinking then? Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway. It's, it's the same with our, I, it's funny because I had a friend and we were talking about this very much thing and uh, she was talking about how like um, she needs to practice more anatomy and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I said to her that she should too because she was making the claim of like, you know, whenever I do art, I always like keep noodling and doodling like one or two pieces of my whole painting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, oh yeah, that's definitely a result of you not knowing how to um, that's definitely a result of you not knowing how to um, clean up your anatomy. You're like constantly fixing it, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, if you just put like a lot of good work in studying anatomy, you'll, you'll, this part will be easier to do. And then I, I 
did a video of like uh, my latest sketchbook that I got, and it's just a bunch of uh, hands. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And and uh, I was like, I'm just this whole sketchbook is only about hands, you know, <laughs> and I'm only focused on that. Uh, there's other things on my list to get better at, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty good at most of the things already. I have a strong baseline. So mm -hmm. the thing that I want to really get good at is the ability to draw hands with a little bit more emotion. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's my agenda with the sketchbooks. So whenever I draw in it, I, I try to save myself from any other impulse of drawing mm -hmm. anything else. You know, occasionally I'll draw something else, but nothing too crazy off the topic. It might be like the person's arm to hand, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but this is kind of going to the point of like, I'm working with the PVC piping right now. You know what I mean? That's me yeah. using just the PVC pipe. I'm staying real focused mm -hmm. until I really get a grasp of this thing. Uh, people don't stay focused and then they have too many things on their mind. They're studying way too many aspects. One thing at a time. Yeah, I think this whole thing comes from that I, I've, I've been working uh, for a company as a concept artist for, for years. And uh, I don't know why, but I, I just didn't uh, make any progress while I was working there. So much work. No, no time to get better. They didn't want me to get better. They just <laughs> want me to do the job, and that's yeah, okay. Sure. And uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm just. I, I, I would like to punish myself with, <laughs> with something. <laughs> yeah. So oh, check it out. No, yeah. So check it out. It's um, to kind of hit on that note. Um, if you are not drawing. Uh, anything if you're not doing anything new and you're not challenging yourself and doing anything new then you're 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 not going to improve on mm -hmm. on these new facets what you probably got good at was like whatever that work was because you were practicing it very often mm -hmm. um, you you were getting good but just getting good at that thingy mm -hmm. and if that's not the thing that you wanted to be really good at then obviously that can be very discouraging yeah. for sure yeah, yeah. Like if you if I had a student who she like all she did was design like cute cats for like mobile games and and yeah. she hated it but that was like her first job so she you know she just kind of like did what she had to do yeah and she's like I want to draw like witches and like monsters and all this stuff like I just did this because that's what my school told me to do and then I, I regret it you know mm -hmm. um and I was like yeah man like I get it like you know people just want to get a job and I said well when you get a job that's all you're going to be doing. So you better hope that you get a job that you actually is relevant to the skill that you want to get great at. Mm -hmm. And in her case, it wasn't. And so she hated it. And then um, I told her, all right, well, then you're going to start drawing cats, cute cats. Like all the stuff you said to me is very cute. Right. Stylistically, stylistically, you need to stop drawing that way. You need to gather reference. That's not cute. You need to gather reference that's really monstrous and, mm -hmm. and really like the opposite of cute, and, you know, yeah. And she started doing that and she started getting better at that and uh -huh. she was getting better and better and her stuff started looking more and more gross. But she was really good at drawing cute. Like, you know, <laughs> I looked at her portfolio, it was super cute. Uh, but, but that's my point. And she, she was just like, that's not what I want to do. And so she, mm -hmm. she made the effort. So, uh, because I don't really think um, there's anything wrong with practicing like one type of thing over and over it's just back to kind of the point you statement that you're making of like, if that's not what you want to do, mm -hmm. right. Then obviously it's going to be aggravating that that's all you do. And so, so it's, it's a matter of just like, um, yeah, it's just a matter of like practicing things that challenge you. Mm -hmm. I usually say, if you want to get better at something, uh, if you, if you want to get good at something, it's gotta, it's gotta be challenging, you know? Mm -hmm. If it's that, like, if you're doing something and it's really hard, uh, you're on the right track. If you're doing something that is it's very easy, then you're just doing something that you already know how to do. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah. Like uh, the walking analogy again, like if I were to tell you to walk across the street, you'd be like, yeah, I could do that. If I asked you to walk across this tightrope, that would be much more challenging. You would have to train how to walk on the tightrope, right? Yeah. Like on a wire, you know? 
like you got the at least the walking part it's just the balancing on a small string that you don't mm -hmm. know how to do but if you did it eventually your balance will be super epic and you can like walk on many things mm -hmm. yeah yeah got it all right i'm gonna open it up for another question okay okay thank you yeah hopefully that answered. I, I spent a lot of time on that because um that answer hits a lot of people's mm -hmm. uh thought process too so you're not alone with this problem i assure you yeah yes thank you thank you very much uh -huh. Any other questions? Don't be shy. Uh, you have a question on the on the chat. Oh, can you read it out loud for me? Yeah, sure. I don't read. Um, <laughs> um, okay, as it is. Sorry, I have to to head. Out early, I asked two questions. The first one is deadline with uh, burnout from studying. And the uh -huh. other is how to come to your own style. Cool. Uh, burnout is a rampant thing in our industry. Um, I am not a fan of burnout. I, in fact, encourage my students to try to not work so hard that they get burned out. Um, but if you're working on a deadline and you have to, because you're getting paid, I mean, that's just the way it is. The industry works in this way. It's really hard to avoid, understand, you know? Um, but for me, uh, what's really important is that you learn how to manage your time more and more efficiently. So that way you can kind of hopefully work on client work in a reasonable pace. If you're doing homework and you have like a lot of like stuff that your university is asking you to do, um, it's the same idea. I just be a little bit, it's like the whole work smarter, not harder strategy. Okay. And so for me, uh, I think four hours a day is more or is, is a good, enough amount of time to really get good at something. And when I say four hours, I don't mean like your normal four hours. I mean like straight four hours, like no distraction of any kind. You understand? Because there are people who will spend seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hours on something, but you'll, you know what I'm getting at. It's not really, you know what I mean? Like 10 hours of like good work, like they're on their phone or they're checking a YouTube video. And I've done this too. You know, I'm not trying to make it seem like I don't do this. I'm just saying I acknowledge that it's not productive. But if you just like put your phone on silent or you turn off your phone entirely and you just go straight in to just working, you know, and you just let nothing distract you. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty gold. Um, I'm, I have something to add in, in this, if you, if you let, if it's okay. No, nope, it's um, not okay. So anyways, continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it, it is. But uh, what was the other part of the question before you get into it? I, I uh, sure. It. Uh, how to get, how to, to, to learn your skills. Oh, I yeah, guess. style. So yeah. that's right. Okay, There's go ahead. Anyways, style. with the burnout. Sorry. Because I'm interested in what you have to say too. So you're going to talk about burnout? Oh, Okay. Um, it's, it's just that um, I'm, I'm, I'm in the industry of the VFX for, for so long. And lately, the last, I guess, five years, I really see a lot of artists working at the same time they look in video <laughs> on their phone. So it's like a lot of uh, lack of productivity on, 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 on work but they do a lot of extra work because they don't achieve their goal during the day. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I see that a lot. <laughs> yeah. I have a friend who she like literally like does all her work when she gets home. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, 
what are you doing? You know, <laughs> that's crazy. Anyway. And, and so uh, ultimately the point I'm trying to make here and the point you were just making is that like most of the time people aren't as efficient as they think they are, you know, and you'll be shocked like with just a little bit of like attention to your time, mm. uh, how much time you're wasting um and once you start to recognize that you are wasting lots and lots of time and you become a little more efficient uh, you'll you'll get more stuff done uh timers is one of the things that i've used that really helped me i think timers are are an ingenious way to stay productive timers and i use a lot of alerts i use like calendars like the google calendar like it goes off quite often but um, going to the style thing, style to me is like a, a, good, a good way of thinking about that is like language. Okay, so think about, think about speaking the way you speak with the accents, the words that you use, the word choices that you use when talking to somebody, to an, a, another individual. Um, that was all built on a foundation of like your parents, the way that they talk to your friends, the way you talk with your friends, the media that you've consumed when you're younger, all of these types of factors, you know? And uh, style should be the same way where you are exposed to, um, you're essentially exposed to art that inspires you and gives you a context of way of thinking of that stuff. You know, so like if I look at like a Mike Mignola painting and, you know, a Jimenez, um, I can't pronounce his name, but like, uh, or let's say I look at like, um, like the Dylan Cole, uh, sorry, Sean Gor Gordon Murphy, he's a good artist too, Mike or Mark Molnar, right? If I start looking at these people's styles, right, and I start to kind of get a clue of like how I can try to draw like these comic book artists that I admire, or if I stick to con like concept art, which I have more of a plethora of names I can bring up. Like if I draw like Ryan Minerding and I have like, uh, or I paint like Ryan Minerding, but then I draw like Peter Hahn and then I have the values of Charlie Wen and I go on and on about like all these different artists that I could emulate. This is where my style will start to evolve. Um, the kinds of things that I'm into, like the kinds of art that I'm into, these things will start to evolve into my style, you know? Like it's already kind of happening because I've, I've been looking at a lot of these comic book artists and the thing about comic book artists is that their drawings are really appealing. They're like really well drawn, like aesthetically. Like they're not drawing anything in terms of design usually. You know what I mean? They're not like, they're just like drawing Superman really cool, you know? But Superman himself is not like this amazing design. It's just like, you know, a guy wearing a cape and wearing tights, you know? Yeah. But it's like the way it's drawn is like super good. Does this make sense? Yeah. Uh, it's like the drawing itself is incredibly appealing. And I'm like learning a lot about that. I'm like, oh man, like just drawing good, like has its own appeal that I don't necessarily do. Like I, I definitely have good drawing aesthetics. But in comparison to some of the comic book artists that I've been looking at, I, I can see the discrepancies much easier. Let me show you an example. Right? Yeah. Like, this is a great example of, like, this is really well drawn. Like, it's not like the design of the character is very simple. It's just, like, a guy wearing a fedora and, like, a mask and wearing a trench coat and holding guns. But it's like the angles and the perspective and the graphic read of it all is really well designed, you know? And I don't do that. I'm not an illustrator. Wow, what a beautiful, what a beautiful illustration this is. See, that's like the silhouette of a knife, right? Look at that. It's tiny. That's amazing. That's ingenious. Anyway. So I'm, I'm getting better at that because I've been practicing that a lot. You know? Um, 
so like my my concepts i think are ultimately going to benefit from this in some way for sure um i'm not sure how but they will and i'm not sure when but they will yeah just looking at that already like inspired me i was like oh what if i just like pop his silhouette from the bottom that could be cool experimentations anyway one last question if anybody's got one oh you know what i need to like Oh, yeah, dude. Getting into that ruined Jaya world of art. That's pretty interesting. That kind of creates like the illusion of like motion blur. Interesting. All right. I just got too addicted to it, though. Better pull back. Pull back. <laughs> Abort. Okay. All right. I think I'm done, Skis. Do you guys have any final questions before I send you guys out into the world? For myself, it's all good. Yeah, you guys um, have done really good work. I'm actually very proud of all the progress you guys have made. It's pretty good. I'm very impressed. So just keep up the, the good habits. Keep up the good artwork. I think one thing that um, a lot of people tend to... Um, you know, tend to do to themselves is they get a little overworked and they don't like think too much and all this type of stuff. But, you know, you guys are doing pretty great. I think if you guys just keep your eyes on the prize, follow my instruction the best you possibly can, uh, you guys will come out of this okay. Great. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the class here. But I appreciate you guys' hard work. Keep up the good stuff. Don't be strangers to one another. <laughs> talk to each other like help each other out you know yeah because because uh there, here's a word of advice is that like you know uh, as concept artists people don't realize um what the pixel pixel brush oh this is pretty cool in fact when did i make this brush and why <laughs> anyway um a lot of times people don't realize the 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 fact that like as concept artists we it's a very small industry and a lot of us will meet each other again in other parameters and if you make friends with one another you know friends like working with friends and mm -hmm. one of you guys might work, end up working at a studio while another one is looking for a job and that works out more uh that works out a lot more than you would expect okay especially in the beginning like when i first started like i think 90 like 99 percent of my all my jobs came from friends like vouching for me you know mm -hmm. it was pretty consistent too like i can see like most of my real good jobs came from uh word of mouth and friendships you know uh now it's like maybe it's safe to say that maybe it's like um I would say like it's closer to like 80, 80, 20 now. It's still like a lot of word of mouth, but there are people now that just come straight to me, you know, mm -hmm. um, and like reach out to me directly for opportunities um, that I've created for myself. Right. I don't know if I like this smudge tool. I'm just so used to the smudge tool and in infinite painter. I just need to like recreate it somehow. They're so, they're so good though. I don't know if it's possible. Um, anyway, but like the, the reason why I get these opportunities now is because, um, uh, I go to events and I talk to people. I have my own social media expansion, you know, I have like a legacy online, you know, and this mm -hmm. is how I get all this, these extra opportunities that would normally wouldn't, it's like, it's exponential, right? Like what I've built over time. Right. 
um, where I understand that not you guys, you guys can't just rely on people coming, reaching out to you. So that making friends is a really, really powerful tool. And I, I think the key word there is making friends, you know, mm-hmm. don't think of it as like, Oh, better like network. No, like make friends with one another. another. Mm-hmm. And it, the more genuine it is, the easier it is for people to vouch for you. So anyway, all right, guys, now for real, we're going to let you guys go. Peace out. Have a great weekend. All right. You too. Thanks, Thanks, man. Take care, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.